here to talk about the Tony Braxton Unbreak My Heart movie that aired yesterday uh, on Lifetime TV. First of all, kudos to Lifetime. I think, you know, when it comes to... Excuse me, I'm so sorry. When it comes to... Um, movies and stuff. I think they try. Like, they really... You missed the mark with Aaliyah, but I think, you know, with Whitney, you didn't actually do too bad. I think with this, you didn't too bad. You didn't do too bad either. Um, but I'm going to say it could have been a lot better. Now, let me say, first of all, I am a huge... If anybody really knows me knows, I am a huge Tony Braxton fan. Braxton fan, period. I love them all. Because I, I think all of them possess something unique and, you know, something other. I, I like them all, actually. I like Tamar I, as extra as she can get. But I can relate because I'm the baby of my family, too. Um, I like Tawanda because I think we all have that one friend that's the more, you know, tries to be the more calm, cool, and collective one. But occasionally can stir the pot. I love Trina. Uh, because once again, we all have that, that one friend that is a party animal and bubbly and bright and fun and full of energy. And then I love Tracy um, because Tracy's just Tracy. Tracy is just her. She's you know she's out there you know and she just does her and she's Merlin, not Marilyn. She's Merlin all day, and we love you for it, Tracy Braxton. We love you. Um, Oh, let's see. And of course, Tony, she's the eldest. Uh, I have a, my best friend. He's the eldest of his family. He actually reminds me a lot of Tony. You know, very, uh, like, you know, I think people who are the eldest of the family, whether male or female, they, they tend to put the weight of everybody else on their shoulders. So, on to the movie. The movie actually wasn't bad. I, I thought it wasn't bad, but I will say this. I can agree with, um, James Crum, I think it's Cadwell, Spiller Boy. I love you, by the way. I love you, okay? You and I could be friends and have coffee and tea and really get get down, okay? Love you to death. Um, shout out to you, honey. Um, and I agree with some some other reviews that I've seen that it was a bit, it was, the timeline was rushed. Like, for me, I'm going to start out, the things that stood out to me. First... I don't know who they picked to pick. I don't know who they picked to play Pebbles or Perry, Miss Sister Perry Reed, but no God. And that was Faith Evans. That was Faith Evans in a blow. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the woman that played Pebbles, and nothing against the actress, she was just get, she just did what she had to do with the job that she was given. But when I first saw, I'm like, who was that? Like, she looks nothing like her and she sounded more like a valley girl because if you if you ever watch a pebbles interview pebbles is very very atlanta pebbles is very southern male very even though she's from california but she i mean she has like a southern twang on her voice she really really does um and pebbles is more of a karma perfected sister she's not she's not that that like i think had they maybe added like a reddish tint to her hair, it would it would have been more convincing, maybe. I just think her hair was a bit too blonde for me, but I think she did a pretty good job. Um but she just the look was off. I'll just say that. Now, in terms of the woman that played Tony, I think the woman that played Tony, I think she did an okay job. I really do. I think she made Tony seem so bubbly. But if you are a Tony Braxton fan, then you'll know, and this is what I kept thinking in my head, you'll know that in her book, if you read the, the book based upon the movie, you'll know that in the book, she actually talks about how she received training to make her speaking voice higher than what it than what it originally was. Originally, she was very, very deep to the point to where people said she sounded like a man. So she had to get training. And that was the one thing that I wish they should have showed. I wish they, they should have show, they could have showed like everything she went through. Like where was where was um Ernesto Phillips and Renee Diggs? The woman that taught Tony how to sing. Not saying that Tony didn't sing, but the woman that gave her vocal training. If you read the book, if you read the memoir, then you know what I'm talking about. For all my true 
Tony fans. And if you haven't read the book, I really suggest you guys pick it up because it's a, it's a great read. I read the book and I actually did the audio book. I didn't actually get the, the physical. But I got the audio book and I that book, for me, I finished that book within two days because it was that good. It was very good. Um, and, it, and it actually tells you a lot about the entertainment business, which I loved. So it was kind of like getting an insider's view on, on how the business really is. And it's not an easy business by any stretch. Um, well, not well, that aspect of it anyway, uh, of the entertainment business. Um, Debbie Morgan is Miss Evelyn. I think you did a wonderful job, Miss Morgan. You, I've, I've loved you since all my children. Uh, I, yeah, all my children. And um, Eve's by you, of course. And even Sanford, when you played a blind woman. Okay, uh, I I've loved you since then for those beautiful dimples. And I swear you never age. Just I live for you. Okay. Uh, the thing about it, though, that I will say, I think though you played your part very well. Evelyn, baby, they made you seem really mean, like just really staunch, like just really like, you know, like if you if I met you, you would preach to me, you know what I mean? Like it's you know, and maybe you're not like that now, but maybe you were then. I don't know, but that was one thing I wish they had a dive into too, because they didn't talk about how they slowly became religious extremists. They didn't talk about that. They talk. They just. Like, bam, you know, automatic. They were all, you know, they were just, you know. And I think the movie kind of, you had to read in between the lines. The one thing that I really will say that I didn't like was when Tony, she drove from Maryland, she got to Atlanta. And she got to Ellie Reed's house. And I'm listening to the radio in the movie. And they're like, and yeah, that new Janet Jackson, we're playing the album from Janet. And I'm like, wait. Tony Braxton's album came out in 92, 91, 92, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm like, Janet didn't come out to 93. This timeline is kind of off. You know, so to me, the timelines could have been, I don't know, they just could, they could have been a lot better. Um, As far as the, the women that played the other sisters, they got Tamar right on. But I... I and this is no shade to you, Tamar. I love you. But doing someone who is loud, who's a little obnoxious, who's a little ghetto, is not hard to do. I mean, drag queens do that every day. So, Tamar Braxton, baby, you ain't hard to act. Love you, though. No, and it's no shade, okay? Love you. I really do because I, I think you're the bomb. I like you a lot. I think you could be a little bit more. You've matured because I've watched you since, even when you were with your, your sisters, you were the Braxtons. And even when you came out with your first album in, I think, 99, I followed you ever since then. So, you know, I, and I think your third album, Calling All Lovers, is wonderful. So, because uh, I know you don't count your first album, but baby, we, we count it. Okay, it's still out there, okay? Just saying. Love you, though. Um, The woman that played Tawanda, no. Like... I know Tawanda did not wear pigtails that much. Like, there's no way. Maybe she did, but I just felt like the whole pigtail hairpiece made her look so dowdy and homely. And and I don't get that with Tawanda. I get someone who's very elegant. I get someone who's funny. I get someone who's just, you know, comfortable in her skin. Tracy, they did a great job with, actually. Um, I think they did a great job. I think... You know, and, and Trinity did a great job, too. So, the casting of the sisters, excuse me, was not, quote, unquote, too bad. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to think. There was just, there was a lot of key elements that were missing. Like, I wish they had, a, when, they, when they did the first bankruptcy scene and she went to trial, I wish they had have said, okay, now we need to, because that was, that was, like, before the heat era. So, now we need to change her hair. Now we need to get, you know, get the get the long straight hair and, you know, all of that. That's when it, because to me, they kind of rushed that part of, or that sequence. And I felt they could have done a lot better than that uh, when it comes to that. Now, 
Even the more than a woman thing. They didn't talk about that when that album came out. At, they like they hinted around it, but y'all could have done a better job than that, in, in my opinion. Um, in my opinion, but but you know you can't. I mean, Tony's had a really varied life, so there's a lot that it's kind of impossible to cram that much of a career in in a, in a almost two hour movie. It's just impossible. Um, but for those of you who who don't know who Tony Braxton is, or you don't you don't know about her legacy like myself, you know, and others like me, then if you watch this movie, you'll be confused because you'd be like, "Well, what is what?" You know. Now, when she did the Arsenio Hall show with the guy that played Babyface, great job to the guy that played Babyface. Great job, like, wow, good job. You you did a great job, even though in some sequences you did look a preacher though, by the way they had you dressed. Um, but the Arsenio Hall show was awesome, you know. Uh, with her wanting to get a boob job, they forgot to mention her nose job, and she got her nose done too, as well as her breast. Um, there was just so much that they cut out. Uh, let me see. They cut out the, okay, they, they talked about the Kenny G tour, but they cut out how she borrowed money from, I think, Kenny G, and how her, she and Prince became really good friends, and Prince called her during her bankruptcies, like, during all of them, and still contacts her to this day. So, um, yeah, they cut out her friendship with Prince, which I thought was, you know, in my opinion, kind of critical. Um, let me see. What else? It actually got pretty good with the whole, when they were going towards the, the Braxton family values uh, part. And, you know, when when uh, Debbie Morgan was like, you know what? I'm going to slap the piss out of you. That is so Missy. <laughs> That's so Evelyn. That's so something that Evelyn would say. Um, But it kind of made me think about just having that kind of guilt. Like, I honestly, and this is just my personal opinion, I feel like because of all the guilt, that's honestly why she ended up having all the health problems she had. And I and, and I know that may sound far-fetched, but sometimes you can hold in your guilt or your anger or your whatever, and it can manifest into health ailments. So, you know, that's just my thing. And the one thing that they skipped that I wish they hadn't skipped, and I, but they tried to hint around it a little bit, was her first abortion and her uh, relation, her previous relationships before Carrie Lewis. And let me say this. The guy that played Carrie Lewis was fine. Oh, my God. They all, like, all the men look, looked great. Like, L.A. LA Reed, he did a great job with L.A. Reed. They did a great job with Babyface. He acted his ass off. Uh, the guy that played Carrie Lewis was beautiful. I mean, just luscious. They well, they all were in my opinion, but yeah, Carrie Lewis really stood out. But he kind of acted like Tony, like for Tony, that was the only one, and maybe that's what she wanted because she was the executive producer of the show or the movie. So maybe that's what she wanted. Maybe she wanted it to convey that that for her, she was her, he was her one and only. So I can kind of see that. Um, let me see what else was there when it came to the performance aspect of it, like where, you know, they did the Unbreak My Heart, they did It Wasn't Man Enough in Vegas, um, Hurt You, and the lip syncing for um, Give You My Heart for the RC Hall show. Um, that could have been a lot better. To me, that was very stiff, and I feel like the actress who played her didn't study her enough. She didn't study her mannerisms. She didn't study her, her vocal technique. You know, that she, her stage techniques that she does on stage. She didn't study when it came to her speaking. Then even though, yeah, you, you, you're trained to speak higher in interviews, she didn't study her speaking voice when she's not on. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like the sultriness of Tony was kind of lost. Um, but they did their best as far as costuming. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Like from a far away distance with the Unbreak My Heart thing, which was the 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 Gucci dress with the the uh the uh Star is Born wig because uh, that's where they got it from originally from Barbara Streisand um from a far away distance like when he when he panned out yeah it, it, I'm like wow that kind of looks like Miss Tony and then they went in with I'm like oh 
Okay. You know, and I and I also would say too, I think Tony wasn't Tony's thin. Tony's small bone, but Tony's not that small. Um, Tony's kind of in the middle. And Tony and I we're about this I think she's she and I were like the same height because she's like five three, I'm five one. We're pretty much the same, damn near, like by a couple of inches. Um so she yeah, I, I think they could have done a little bit more with that, like with the physical stature. But in the beginning, she was a very kind of skinny mean kind of girl, but she wasn't that skinny. Um, oh, let me say this. Shout out to Carrie Lewis. Okay. With your fine stuff, honey. Yes. And it was nice to see her children actually in the movie, like towards the end. That was cute. And when she came in and she, you know, you saw her in the Grammy dress that she won. A Grammy for Love, Marriage, and Divorce, which was a wonderful album. I play that album all the time. Um, I just think that if you are a Tony Braxton fan, you're going to see the inconsistencies. If you are not, and Tony Braxton is new to you, her catalog is completely new, you may not get it. You know what I mean? Like, behind the music is better. And the one thing I wish they had have included, and they kind of, they included it at the trial, but I wish they had have included when she went on Oprah. The famous Oprah interview where she claimed that Oprah was mean. I wish they had have included that because that would have been, that would have really like tied in a lot of pieces. Um, or when she went to Japan and she spent four grand on Kobe steak. You know, just like things that she didn't know. I wish they had have included that, but they didn't. Um... And when it came to, like, the awards and stuff, they should have made a montage. That's what I would have done. I would have made a montage. Like, if, if I were in charge of that film, I would have said, well, do a montage of all the awards that I've won. Like, all my grannies and stuff. And, you know, adding clips. And, I mean, maybe that would have been time-consuming, but, but I think that would have tied in a lot of loopholes a lot better. And then with each year, each different year, you could have included a different piece of music. To let the fans know, like, hey, this is her. She's st we're still in the Tony Braxton years, her first album. Okay, now we're moving into the secret years. Why do you include the make the the making of you're making me hot video with her in the white cat suit? That's that, like that's famous. Why didn't you include that? Like that that would have really it would have really like put things into perspective. He wasn't man enough. That would have done the same thing. I hit the freeway and then with her getting pregnant or clips of her doing the inside out special when she was on uh when she did I Aida and Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. Things like that. You I wish they had have included. I mean it would have made a lot more sense and it would have flowed better. To me it was just okay we're in ninety two. Now we're in ninety six. Now we're in two thousand five. Now we're in two thousand ten. I'm like wait, 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 slow down. So to me it was a bit it I had to agree with other reviewers. It was a bit rushed. Uh, rushed to me, but it but but it wasn't bad, but it could have been better. You know what I mean? Like, I hope. Look, if y'all ever make a movie about me, the faculty of Brown Honey, I wanted to star Mel Jackson, RuPaul, and Laverne Cox. Okay, I look. Don't fuck up the casting. Okay, I don't want Todd Bridges playing me. I'm just saying. Um. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? Um, but other than that, it wasn't bad. It could have been better. It could have it could have been a lot better, in my opinion, but it wasn't bad. I think they worked well with what they had. And, and you can tell that with this movie, they were playing it really close to the vest because they didn't want to offend anyone. They really didn't. Um, you know, they didn't want... Like, you could tell that Tony did not want to offend her sisters. She didn't want to fit in her mom, you know, L.A. and baby face. She didn't want, like, she really didn't want to, like, you know, go, or the, okay, one thing I, I forgot to mention. What about the post era? What about that one? Like, you know, that that really would have been um, interesting to see, the post era. Or her being misdiagnosed twice. I think she was misdiagnosed, like, twice or three times for lupus. That would have been interesting. So that way you would have known, like, oh, that's how she found out she got lupus or whatever. You know, more than just her, like, one day she's just passing out. She's having a heart attack. That doesn't make 
I mean, it makes sense. But like I said, if you're not a true Tony fan, you won't get it. So it, it, it the movie can lose you. But luckily for me, I'm a huge Tony Braxton fan. So I kind of knew a lot of the backstory. Um, I'll say this. It could have been, like I said, it could have been better. And I will say, if you really want to check out a true Tony Braxton story, read the book or watch Behind the Music or watch Tony Braxton Inside Out. They're all available on YouTube. Those are better um, examples because the movie gives you too much. It, 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 it It's good, but it leaves a lot to be desired. You know, the loopholes just need to be filled in just a little bit. But kudos to Lifetime for even doing it because I think they I think they did a good job with what they had. I think Tony was actually kind of smart to play it safe in that because, you know, it's the music industry. The music industry, the entertainment industry is extremely small. And you don't want to offend anybody because it's like a domino effect. Uh, but I also say that if you tell tell your story, if you're telling your story, then you need to tell your story. Just saying. Because trust me, if I ever get an option to make my book into a movie. Oh, honey. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be me, Mel Jackson, Laverne Cox, and RuPaul. Just saying. And maybe Andy Cohen is my best friend. Just saying. I'm just saying. But anyway, that's my review on the Tony Braxton story. Tell me what you think. Leave your comments below. I will read them, and I will respond to them. Um, you know, let me know what you thought of the film. Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Like the video, share the video, rate, comment, and of course, subscribe. I am, of course, the fabulous Leo Brown. Excuse me, y'all. I'm so sorry. And I will see you guys uh, next week with my What I Know For Sure videos and Tarot Card Tuesday. I know I've been laxing on those. I've been really busy working on my book. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time, and I love you all.